All right. Hello and welcome back to another BC Sandpile. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Salander. We got Dave Hagblad here with me as well. And today is a really exciting topic. Uh, it's one that I've, I've wanted to share and present on for a while, but uh, honestly, it's, it's hard to find the time to really go through and, and do some great use cases. Uh, and, and so today I'm really excited to, to share some of my early learning lessons using Dreamweaver and Adobe Business Catalyst and GitHub together. And there's several different advantages to this. One is, you know, version control, right? And being able to put things up on a testing test server before you deploy to a remote server. And then of course, uh, also being able to work in a team environment uh, with other developers or even a client who might be editing the CSS or the uh, HTML or, or even the JavaScript perhaps. So. Uh, we're gonna we'll dive into that, but first I wanted to get started with just some industry news. So first and foremost, you guys may have noticed that we do have a new logo uh, for BC Sandpile, which is uh, really exciting. I guess it's been the we loved the last uh, kind of branding the logo that we, we were used to seeing that for the last five or six or seven years, however long it's been. Uh, but we've got a new format and wanted to have a new kind of logo, new, uh, slightly updated brand to, to go along with it. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. All right, next up is, Dave had gone over a little bit the release, the latest Business Catalyst released last time, and I wanted to clarify something that we found out the hard way uh, this week, and that is the, uh, the DNS records were supposed to be updated to allow for underscores and some other special characters inside of uh, you know, C name and uh, text records and, and other sort of DNS records. And we have found that it actually does not work in the C name records. And that was a pretty important for us because we use a support uh, system, a support tool ticketing system that actually wants us to put in the, the DKIM, the DKIM uh, as a C name. And so we're currently unable to do that. But Business Catalyst said that is going to be transitioned um, in a few, I don't know when, a few weeks, months, likely months, uh, where they're going to update it so that uh, the special characters and underscores can be in more records. Okay. Uh, from the BC Academy side of things, uh, we Dave previewed last time a little bit a featured uh, links tutorial in a dynamic menu. So just kind of sharing my screen here real quick with you guys. Um, uh, we're going to do a quick preview. So dynamic menu with featured links web app. So sometimes you got mega menus and they're going to have like featured links inside of it. So this just kind of give a nice tutorial to show you how to, how to do that, how to set it up. And then in two days from now, uh, Greg Pace is going to be coming out with a tutorial that allows you to order an Uber or a Lyft from your website. So that's pretty exciting, especially if you've got clients who are local, like a retail or um, you know, doctor or dentist office, whatever. Uh, people might want to click from their mobile device and go right and to ordering an Uber or a Lyft. Uh, next up, we have BC Max. We're only two weeks away from this annual conference. Uh, Dave and I will be there along with many of the other members of uh, the team. And we are really excited to be, you know, see some familiar faces, meet some new faces and have you know, a whole week almost uh, of talking about Business Catalyst and the latest and the greatest that's happening in the design and de development industry. So if you are gonna be there, uh, let us know, shoot us a note, we'd love to uh, make sure we uh, see everyone. All right, uh, as a reminder, two weeks from now, we are not gonna have the uh, sand pile at the normal time. The conference, the B Business Catalyst pre-conference is actually gonna be live streamed, or maybe not live stream is the right way to put it. Um, well, it's gonna be broadcasted um, to, and there'll be a link, and I believe e people from uh, in Australia, it's Sydney, I think CBO might be hosting uh, a live viewing of, of the, uh, uh, of the Adobe Max conference or the Business Catalyst conference rather. So uh, stay tuned for that information. Uh, again, really, really excited about that. Uh, good, so that, that wraps up the, the new information for uh, since, since last week in the Business Catalyst world. And I'd like to transition over to today's topic. Um, all right, which is using Dreamweaver, Adobe Business Catalyst and GitHub together. All right. So I'm going to do a, an overview of how this works, how I use it, and and then you know open it up to to questions to see um, you know if, if people have any um, 
uh, need some clarification on how this works. Uh, I do want to put out a disclaimer and just say that I, I'm not an expert at, at Git, uh, the Git process or GitHub. Uh, we do use it here at Chicago Digital. And everything I'm about to show you is, are things that I have tested and and, and worked with personally, just experimenting with, uh, but they have not been introduced to the team at Chicago Digital. They've, they're not in production here. This is this is not uh, this is not necessarily something to go out and just say, hey, we're going to start using this right right away because this is what Chicago Digital does, and and this is how all their developers work. So it, it's not there. This is more the kind of the preliminary phases of figuring out how all these tools work together. And I'm excited to share uh, how, how, this, how this works. Okay, so to start, I have got my Dreamweaver uh, panel up here. And on the left, you can see I'm connecting to a website uh, called JIT Dev. And let's just briefly take a look at the website. It's actually built off of an old, uh, old BC Gurus template. So I've got a development server set up JIT Toyota left 2016 at businesscatalyst.com. And then I actually have a re, uh, testing server set up as, as well. And so before I even uh, get into the GitHub part, I want to talk about Dreamweaver and business catalyst and how you can actually set up both a remote and a testing server. So the advantage, the reason why you'd want to do this is let's say if you've got, in this case, it may not make a ton of sense because I'm, it's just a development website anyways, uh, my main like remote server, but pretend that was actually the live website and I was making updates rather than building a whole new website. Or let's say I needed to build, I'm building a new website, but the client's already in Business Catalyst and I have to transfer it back over. Well, the great thing is now I can, I can test and deploy everything to a test server. I can keep track of all of the changes with GitHub. And then when it's time to go and push to the remote, I can make sure that I, I, all the files that uh, I've updated are, up, are being pushed to the remote and then I can, I can use Dreamweaver synchronization to make sure if anyone has updated the website since the time that I've been working on the, on the site that I can reconcile those differences uh, as well. All right, so just taking a peek behind the scenes here with Dreamweaver, I'm in the setup for the website and you can see I've got a remote server set up and a, a testing server. And it, when you go in here, it's just the normal credentials that you would log in with for, um, for Business Catalyst sites. For the testing server, I, I could not get this feature where it says automatically push files to testing server, automatically upload files to, ser to, save, to server on save. Uh, this, this may be um, for other types of like, uh, well, for certain code it might do it for. I'm not really sure. I couldn't, I couldn't actually get that to work because that'd be really nice if I just saved and automatically deployed my testing server. I didn't have to uh, publish to it. So that, that could be something that exists. I just don't know how to do it yet. And it, sh it should be a feature inside of, of Dreamweaver. All right. Uh, one of the things I want to let you know about, which will make your life easier inside of Dreamweaver and GitHub is to turn off the maintain design notes. Now this is underneath advanced settings, design notes, and uncheck this. Otherwise what Dreamweaver will do is create a folder called uh, underscore notes and then put a DSW sync dot X. Oh, and the DSW sync is a whole different thing, sorry. It, it, will put, uh, it will put these like blank notes files in there which you really don't uh, need. So I would just remove that. Okay. Uh, Greg. Greg, can you log out, please? I, my, my thing is disabled. Okay, anyways. Um, so if we go, uh, no, Dreamweaver is not responding. But anyway, so you want to turn off the design notes here. And now I don't know if you guys can still hear or see me, but I, my computer has, uh, is, is not responding. I don't know if it's zoom or if it's, if it's Dreamweaver. but, uh, give me just a second. I can still hear you and see you, Mike. Okay. Well, interesting. 
Well, my entire Zoom interface is gone, but I'll just continue talking. <laughs> um, all right, so moving, moving on. So now we've got both of those set up. And so what the nice thing is, if I come back over to my browser, I can come over and grab JIT um, Toyota. So this is my this is my testing server. Okay. So I'm going to make a couple changes and show you how I go through the process. Oh, also, I'll, I'll show you my GitHub repo as well. So I figured it'd be easiest just to start with something that we've already done. So let me see. Again, this is just me you know no one no one else is really using this within the organization so you'll see it's just one contributor so anyways you'll see that i've got all of these files um here for uh in in github and one of the things that i want to point out is this i had to dreamweaver crashed on me quite a bit in order to to get this to work because the, the files were so large and i think when you actually put this into practice and you think about well what what do i truly need version control for and that's going to be, I, I, in my mind, things like the JavaScript files, the CSS files, the uh, probably the includes, and it's kind of the, the, the gut code, right? You don't probably need all of the changes that the client has made to the HTML and the images and things like that. So I actually uploaded and synced all of that, but likely in the git ignore file, you would probably exclude all of those things, or rather you would exclude everything except for the certain folders that you'd want to sync. And the reason is otherwise you might be getting a situation where you're constantly having to always kind of version control with the client updating uh, the, the content of, of, of the site. All right, so that's just one thing to, to keep in mind. Well, let's, let's go through the, the process and see some of the things that we're able to do inside of Dreamweaver and Git. So if I move over to the Git panel right here, I can, I can look at any file. Let's just say I'm gonna to go to the um, uh, layouts, online shop, and then I'm gonna to go to the page content. So this is the overall view of the e-commerce page. And so what I'm able to do is if I pull this up, I can right click and click Git, and then see the file history. And this is, kind of, and this is nice. So this shows me that the initial commit I had, um, okay, it was basically just uploading the file. And then here I've got a note, added JavaScript to replace the default text for browse category module in BC. And so it could, you can see that I, I removed this, these two lines, I removed these two lines, and then I added this bit of JavaScript in here. So I, at any time, I can go to any one of these files in Dreamweaver that exists on Business Catalyst, and I can see what the difference uh, you know, what the change was made and when it was made by who and any notes that are associated with, with it, which are really nice. Then what I could do is if I want to, if I want to update something in here and maybe let's say add another, um, you know, maybe I just put my, my credentials at the end of this comment. So everyone knows who it is and I click save, you'll see that Dreamweaver automatically will show you a little indication on the left, uh, based on the difference of your local file versus what is published on the GitHub repo. And if you click on that, you can actually see what the difference is between the files. So yellow means that it has been modified. Green would be a whole new line and red means that something has been deleted. So this, this is nice. So let's, let's do an example uh, of this. So let's say Dave, Dave is working on the live website. And we're gonna just log in here. Let's say Dave's working on the website and he uses the develop panel or he used uh, Dreamweaver or whatever tool he wanted and he just made a, a change and didn't commit it to GitHub. So obviously it'd be best if you're working on a team and everyone's using GitHub. So after you know Dave makes a change, he commits to the repo and then when I sync both of them in Dreamweaver, they're gonna agree with each other, right? But maybe he didn't or maybe the client went and, and made that update. So Let's just do a, a silly um, update to like, let's say the style sheets and module style sheets.css. And let's just say, you know, I'm gonna call this sand pile and, and I'll click save. All right, so if my process is when I'm coming in to edit a website, even if I'm not using Dreamweaver, right? It, we always at Chicago Digital say, grab from the remote server. Don't use your latest one, you know, don't use your file from the local because it, it could have been updated, right? 
So I could, I could click synchronize and I, I would normally, but it's going to take quite a while right now because it's kind of a large site to then find those differences. So I'm at least just going to go to the remote server and I am going to, because I know I want to work on this style sheet, I'm just going to double click and that's going to grab the latest. Do you wish to overwrite your local copy? And I can do that and I can click compare. And with Dreamweaver, I've got, um, I've got this, I've got it hooked up to be with WinMerge. So I can actually see when I'm trying to get the latest version from the server, I can see that it used to say, like my local has test mic in it and the new one has, or like the remote has sand pile in it and say, okay, um, that's fine. I, I do want to, I do want to grab the file and from the remote server. So let me do that again. So I do wish to override and I'll say yes. Okay, so now it says sand pile. And you'll see that as soon as I download this file, GitHub is detecting you know, that this is different than what we have in the repo. And the repo actually has test mic, right? Which is what my local uh, used to be. So at this moment, before I even touch the, the website, I'm gonna you know, pull, I'm gonna synchronize and get everything from the remote server that, that I want. And then I'm gonna look down here in the bottom, you're gonna see a state, all of my files that have been modified or deleted. And, and, and now we need to push to staging for GitHub. So I did change the page content one, but I didn't like, I don't need this. So I can actually just revert the file back. I don't need to make that update. Um, okay, well, there is an error. <laughs> so let's see. All right, there's, it says that another Git process is running. So not really sure what Git process is running at the moment. Um, I could, it could exit out and come back in, but just for the sake of this demonstration, let's just say I want to keep that change. That's fine. Okay. And then I personally uh, ha sometimes have trouble getting the Git ignore file to, to actually remove the notes in the DW sync.xml. It's supposed to some on some sites, this works and some sites it doesn't. Um, but, in this case, uh, fine, I'll, pu I'll publish it to the repo. I really don't want the Dream, uh, Dreamweaver syncs in there, but that's maybe a topic for another time. So I'm gonna commit this. Uh, we've got another process going. Okay, so this is perfect. Now I'm gonna show you what happens if your uh, Dreamweaver errors out on you because it says that you got another like process going on with the Git, uh, with GitHub. I'm not, I, I don't know why that's happening, but if you go to Git, this Git folder, and first of all, in order to do that, you're going to come up here and you're going to say view and say show hidden files. Because if you don't do that, it's not going to show you that there's this local GitHub uh, folder on your local Dreamweaver um, file. So we're going to show hidden files. And then we're going to come in here. And then there's this, uh, I believe it's the, in, the index.lock file. And you need to delete that. So what that does is, Dreamweaver puts that index.lock file in this folder when it's currently in the middle of some sort of GitHub or Git process. And so I don't know what it's trying to do, but it's been trying to do it for a while and I, I need to do something. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of that. So now Dreamweaver says, okay, cool. I'm not doing anything. I'll do, I'll do what you need me to do now. So let's, let's revert back that page content like we tried before. Okay, perfect. And I don't really care about this sync, so I can revert that back. Well, let's just, I don't wanna mess with that actually. So let's, we'll just publish both of these. So now what we're doing is we're checking these. They're on my local file, right? I got that latest module style sheet that, that someone else updated on the website. And I'm gonna, oh, soup, nope, stop, stop. Okay. All right, cool. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit this and I'll say, you know, um, you know uh, latest uh, updates, uh, pulled from remote that client edited or something, whatever. And then I'll hit okay. So now I've, I, I've staged that commit and then I will actually publish and push to GitHub and then hit okay. So I actually never have to leave the Dreamweaver interface to work with my GitHub repo, which is, which is great. So if I come back to GitHub and come back to here and refresh, we should see that it latest updates pulled from remote that the client edited. Great. And we can go into that style sheet, the module style sheet, and we can say, Oh, cool. Now uh, in my GitHub repo, it says sand pile, which is excellent. So let's say I wanted to actually 
uh, before just making these CSS updates and updating the live website, because let's pretend it was actually live. In this case, they're both technically development servers. But if they're both live, what I'd want to do is I, I like opening up this view uh, or it's sorry, it's right here. Hold on. I got to switch over to not the GitHub view. I got to switch over to the, uh, the file view. And then I'm going to use the expanded at, uh, file thing. And then so I'm going to switch over to my testing server, make sure I'm connecting there. And then I'm going to go over to my uh, style sheets and module style sheets. And I can, I'm going to put this, uh, I should be able to select it. So I select and put that file to the testing server. Okay, and again, I can compare. Uh, I'm gonna say yes, please, please update it. And let's go to our testing server and look at this module style sheets and we're gonna get hard refresh and we see that says sand pile, beautiful. So now what I can do is I'm gonna, let's say I wanna make a change to that module style sheets. Uh, file. So now it's a sand pile. Let's just say sand pile. Let's get a little bit more uh, 10, 3, 2017. And I click save. GitHub realizes that hey, I've, I've made a change, but I don't want to push to my GitHub repo yet until I've actually pushed this to the dev server and made sure everything uh, works the way I want it to. So I'm going to grab this file. I can hover over here and see on the test server, or actually, sorry, I need to go back to my local view hit this file. And then when I hover over this, over the put file, it will tell me it's going to put file to the testing server. Now this is something I wish there's like two up arrows in Dreamweaver. So I can say push to test, push to remote. Uh, but I'll show you how to switch between those two in, in a second, but it's, it is a little confusing. So I'm just going to click that. It's going to upload that file to my testing server. So look, I'm on my test server and I'll hit refresh and good. I've got that. If I go over to my um, my live site, so to speak, I'm going to click view page source. And then I am going to click on the models with style sheets, hard refresh. And it just has this, it just has a sand pot, right? So I've, I've been able to publish something to a test server in business catalyst. And I, you know, I've got that version control. So I know what the difference between, uh, the kind of the latest published in, in my new one is. And then if I'm all good with that, again, I could, uh, whether you want to do GitHub first or you want to publish to the remote uh, first, doesn't really matter, but we can commit this again. And I'll just say like added uh, to comments and then I'll hit okay. And then I will, I'll commit that to my repo. So that's making sure that my documentation, my version control is all up to date. So that would be, you know, step one is update the, you know, I guess update the local file. Step two is update your test server. Step three, once you've got your test server ready and everything's working the way you want it, update your Git repo. And then finally, if I want to, when I want to publish that, I'm going to come over to, um, I'm going to come over to the expanded file view. I'm going to switch over to remote server, connect back here. And then I'll select the module style sheets on the right for my local file and I will push that to my remote server. So now all my nice CSS changes have been made and I can come over here and uh, hard refresh and now I've got uh, now that CSS uh, update has ba been made on my server So obviously in a, in a case like this where I'm just updating a comment It's not all that exciting But imagine if I had a scenario like this where I've been working on these updates for weeks maybe months and there's all these things that I need to push to the live server, but I cannot remember what was done you know like can you remember every line of code that you change across all your files for the last week probably not right so one of the things you could do uh, i think the git repo or the git integration does a great job of is if i if i went and edited let's say the contact uh page and i don't know i'm just like added added this line and then i updated the features page i added you know another space here and, and so on and so forth so when when you come back to this to this project and you know, hey, I gotta take all these things live. Well, I can look at my Git panel and I can say, okay, here's all of the things that I have personally been working on that haven't uh, made it to the live. And now I can go, I can go to each one of these files and specific, specifically see what the changes were uh, that were made here. And then of course, 
if you want to, you can, well, not if you want to, what makes sense is that when you go to live, instead of just publishing and be like, oh, cool, a new contact page. I know what I did. I'm going to upload it. Well, what if someone had updated the contact page in the meantime? Well, that's when you can come back to here. You can go remote server. And I know that the contact page has been edited because I can see it right here um, locally. And so I can click right here and I can say, um, so I go back to local and I can say compare with remote server. And then so what, um, what Dreamweaver is going to do, it's going to pull up this for me to see what the difference is. Now, this wasn't super helpful of a, of a compare. It didn't do the greatest job because uh, it's thinking everything is different when it's, that's not true. Really, the only difference is this line right here. So uh, <laughs> this compared to was failing uh, in, in this respect, in a sense. But um, I, I, I would be able to see any difference between what I have locally, and then I can, I can, fit, I can incorporate that because maybe like in, in another paragraph was added to this page. Great, I can make sure that's, that's pushed on my local and that will get committed to both the GitHub and the remote server. So, all right, so I think that's a good overview and I'm actually gonna revert back these files because there's no reason just to go and update them just so they have a, a, you know, a, an extra space in it. So I'll, I'll get rid of that and then I can get rid of, there we go. All right, let's see, any, Dave, any questions that you have uh, or the audience has uh, up to this point? I know I went through that kind of fast, but wanted to give people an overall idea of how all these things kind of work in, in harmony together. Uh, there's a couple notes there. Uh, James RT uh, gave, uh, gave a link for Stack Overflow, how to avoid committing for DW dynamic files. And uh, he also asked a question, Mike, can't you use git ignore for not putting the DW syncs up? Yeah, you can. Um, I just, it works sometimes. It doesn't work other times. I, it feels like it's not consistent with for me, but that may just be my lack of um, like, see, look, see, this is the thing. Look, it, if I go to my Git, how, okay. I feel like it works the best when you first create the repo and as long as the git ignore is never like deleted, is not deleted, then it feels like it works fine. Uh, sometimes my git ignore gets deleted in the process just because I'm playing around with it. And in those cases, I feel like I can't really get it back to work. So if you look, for example, um, this does say the notes in the DW sync.xml is actually um, going to be not added. So these are grayed out. When they're grayed out, it means that the it's not going to actually commit them to GitHub. So for example, maybe I didn't, I, I only wanted, or I wanted to just like, there's no reason maybe to upload all these images, right? So I can add in here, um, let's say slash images, and this should, this should then remove all of the images from being uh, part of the Git repo, which is uh, something that you may want to do. So I don't, yeah, he's absolutely right. And that's how you do it. And sometimes it seems to work. Sometimes I still see them in here. Um, but you can technically write, you should be able to right click on any one of these files, go to Git and say, uh, like add to Git ignore or remove from Git ignore. But th I, there, must, there must be something going on that I don't know of that when I first hook it up with Dreamweaver and the Git ignore file, that seems to work. But after, if it gets deleted and I manually, I manually created this Git ignore file, it just somehow it loses, it lost that synchronization with Dreamweaver. I, I can't explain it. I, I, I don't know. But maybe that stack um, Everflow or <laughs> not Everflow, Overflow uh, might might have it. I'm not sure. Yeah, there was another question earlier, which, which I answered in the chat. But it, uh, the question was compatibility with this and Foundation Builder. And uh, just to expand on that answer, Foundation Builder. When you when you use it, it's it's at the in the admin panel of your website, and when you click save and publish, it actually goes and gets whatever version of foundation you specified in the in the setup, and rebuilds your style.css and your j your jQuery dot your scripts dot js or however you defined it, and rebuilds those and publishes them. Mm -hmm. uh, so to use Dreamweaver with that. I mean, I use Dreamweaver when I'm using Foundation Builder, but you only use it for the HTML. Uh, you have to stay away from the CSS and the, and the JavaScript. So the, sh the longer answer, the shorter answer is yes, you can use it, but you only use it for, for HTML type uh, pages. 
So maybe that's a, a sound, an idea there, Mike, where you would use git ignore to ignore your, your scripts.js and your styles.js or CSS. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great, great idea. And I, I would encourage people, if they're going to get started with this, like it's, it's a tall effort to do an entire website and synchronize every single file. Uh, it's kind of a pain. And actually, like as a workaround in Dreamweaver, there's, uh, I think, a known bug or it's just a, I don't know, a size limitation. And th this isn't a huge site, but there's a lot of images, a lot of files and things like that. So when I first went to synchronize this and click the stage all, it just, it wouldn't work. I waited 10, five minutes, I waited 10 minutes. And so I had to like, that's why I know about, you know, doing the Git index file because I had to figure out how to tell Dreamweaver to stop doing what it thinks it should be doing and then for me to do it. So I actually, in order to commit this entire large website, I had to, exclude everything and then just include certain things then commit it and upload then add a little bit more commit and upload and so it was it was a little bit of a uh not so great process to get the repo set up in the beginning but realistically if i you know if we were to work on this as a team like you and i dave and we're working on this website like do we need every image uh, and every PDF file synchronized between our two systems and the server? Probably not, you know, that, that doesn't, that's not things that coders typically, I mean, some of the images that may have to do with, um, let's say the, the template, but definitely not the hundreds or thousands of product images that, that are loaded onto, onto the site, right? So yeah. I, I can see if you're getting started with using this, excluding everything, except for probably the layouts, module templates, and, you know, an underscore system folder and, and your like JS or your style sheets folder, whatever you put your JS in your style sheet. But limiting to that should be much more manageable and probably the most important stuff when it comes to Business Catalyst websites. And uh, you're not gonna conflict with something that the client's gonna edit and then need to make sure that you're um, kind of staying up to date with. And it's gonna be a whole lot less files to synchronize and and uh, probably shouldn't run into the the uh, issue of of committing them to to GitHub through Dreamweaver like like I ran into. Yeah, I mean, you know, for images we typically have uh, under images there'll be a slash content and a slash template folder. So I, I could see what you mean by get ignore the uh, the content, but but sync the right. Template. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know what we did in this one because this is based off the template. But yeah, we could ignore the slash images slash content, but keep the images slash template. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great thing. And, and I'll, I'll actually tell you the reason why I started using this. It, it's because of apps within Business Catalyst. So what was really frustrating to me was when I wanted to work on an, building a new admin app in Business Catalyst is... I had to find a website in which I wanted to put the app and then I had to go grab the app code from GitHub, download the zip file, unzip it, go to Dreamweaver, upload it. And then when I was done making all the updates and changes and things that I needed, I would then need to like, I need to go and I need to then upload that using the GitHub desktop interface to make sure I had the latest there. And so it was this kind of disjointed process, whereas like every time that I wanted to work on a new version of the app, I like, I kind of, uh, I, I didn't, I had to like pull it out and remember, I couldn't go from computer to computer because, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to commit the whole website to the Git repo for the app because that it didn't make sense. And so it was just this, it maybe there was better process that I could have had, but it just was painful enough for me to be like, oh man, Dreamweaver has this GitHub integration built in. I got to check it out. So from an app process, I'll show you this. It's so much easier. So let's just do uh, solid meta tags free, for example. Did I do it in here? Um, I may not have. I didn't initialize the Git repo with this. Uh, visual content finder preview. Okay, I do have the Git repo in here. Okay. So what I did here, you'll see, let's look at my git ignore file for this is I have, I'm ignoring everything. And then the only thing that I, I care about is the, the visual, the solid visual content finder folder. And so the, the beautiful thing about this is that I can make all these other changes and testing the app to the website and things like that. And then any, the, anything that I ever make a change to from, from here, uh, from the website, is just is gonna I can commit to GitHub and then if I wanted to test this app 
on another website, well, I can just create a new website from any template or any, anything, replicate it from, from our partner portal, and then I can connect a new site in Dreamweaver, and then I can just link it with that GitHub repo, and I can download I can download all the things, I can pull everything from the Git repo, I can put it onto the remote server, and then any changes that I make to that app in this new environment, I can then automatically just commit right back to the, the GitHub. So from an app creation process, like I, this is part of my workflow, no doubt. Like I, this is, this is what, uh, what I use and, and it, works, it works nice, it works great. Uh, Steven wonders, which GitHub plan do we use as an agency? Sure. Uh, we use the team one. So I think we end up paying like $5 or $9 a month per user. So uh, let's see if I can pull that up. I, I don't, I'm not familiar with all the plans off the top of my head. Let's see. Um, let's see your profile. I will say I love uh, GitHub's great. Um, their interface is not always the easiest, so it takes me it's taking me a while to figure out where to go to, to find that information out. Um, I'm on the billing page. I'm on the team plan. We're on the, we use the team plan. Great. And then uh, James said it might be worth noting you don't need to stage every single change as you go. That's only worth doing after you do a bunch of changes. Just maybe re reiterating that for you. Yeah, that's a great point. So what the process that I was showing, like just making update and commenting one file and then, and then committing and, and uploading that, that's likely probably not what you're going to do uh, unless you're just a quick fix, right? You're probably working on a bunch of things and you're going to batch it and make sure it all, you know, all works the way that you want. And then, I mean, even if it doesn't work perfectly, if you, I, I know I do this is uh, I will, let's say, you know, it's getting late tonight. I was working on an app. And I, I know that there's issues. I know that, you know, I'm not done, but I want to make sure that I like my work for today is not gone. Like it, it's somewhere it exists. Like if I come back to it in a month, I don't have to figure out, Oh shit, what folder did I put it in and whatever, you know? So I'll then commit my work in progress. And then in the commit notes say, you know, this is the, the, the things that I still need to work on or I haven't tested this or blah, whatever. So I put those notes in. So it's another thing to note too, is at least for me as part of my process, I don't view commits as only things that absolutely work. Um, you know, that, to each their own, maybe that's, that doesn't go with your process, but it could just be like, hey, I'm done for the day. I need to save this and kind of document where I'm at sort of thing. And, and I think that might be great if you're working on branches um, so that you're not committing to like a master in the end saying, Hey, this is, this is ready to go code, but you know, this is work in progress code. Cool. That's uh, that's all the, the questions and comments, I think. Awesome. Unless someone else has a question about GitHub and Dreamweaver or. Or any, any best practices that you guys have found. I mean, anyone else using version control, uh, working with business catalyst sites and any, any challenges or, or kind of best practices that you guys have come across? Nope. Uh, Mike at C9 says uh, GitHub have a new desktop app that they've just released, but he has, uh, hasn't yet used it for a commit. Yeah, I, I was using the beta version of it and I really liked it. The user interface was better, but interestingly enough, the only reason I downloaded that was so that I could hook it up with Dreamweaver because I, I thought somehow I needed that to hook. I mean, the connection of Dreamweaver and GitHub could or it could be more seamless uh, like that was kind of a challenge uh to figure that out in the first place um but yeah i was really excited about it but then i'm like oh i actually i don't care anymore because i don't ever go into the github uh actual desktop interface i'm just i'm only using you know dreamweaver to to commit it but yeah i it, i definitely recommend uh checking that out i think it's a, a good improvement And then uh, Steven says you missed the start. It looks like you have a main site and a duplicate site as your testing site, and they're both connected to GitHub. Uh, generally speaking, that's true. You maybe go back and watch the recording. We'll get it posted up there tomorrow just for the, uh, for the testing server setup. But 
you're, you're right. There's just two servers uh, set up and you, you deploy to the testing server till you're happy. Then you, you uh, repoint things to the, uh, to the remote server and with the GitHub repository, it right. understands what changes are, have been made and that's what you push. So here is a, a challenge to anyone out there who's uh, you know, good at development and wants to create an app. So what, what we're missing here from the, deploy, from the deployment process of I've got, I wanna make changes to a business catalyst website, I wanna have a testing server, and then I just want like an automated process to push that live to my remote server and not have to worry about something. Well, that all works if you don't have to set up anything new in Business Catalyst. But if you need to set up like a new, um, let's say even a new page sometimes because you got to assign it to a template. If you need, if you added a new web app or whatever, you know, that you can't control via FTP. There's certain things in Business Catalyst you can't control via FTP. But what would be really cool is if like say for example, there is a JSON file that was stored in an app folder that outlined, okay, here is all of the web apps and here's all the, all the things that, you know, all the properties of them that are set up, et cetera, and that you can sync that to GitHub. And then when you go to push to remote, like that actually uploads to the server and then you can go to the remote server and you can say like refresh BC modules, you know, based on latest commit or something and boom, now it updates you know, now it updates all my web apps to now have these five custom fields that now, you know, are being referenced in the code and, and so on and so forth. So that would be, I feel like that's the next thing that's needed to bring this whole uh, development deployment cycle to full circle to a point where it's, you know, streamlined, documented, version controlled. Um, it, but, you know, it doesn't exist yet. But please, someone create it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, Luke has asked, uh, if you know, are GitHub repositories public or only the ones on the free plan? Yeah, if you have a free GitHub account, they're, they are required to be public. So you, in order to have a private GitHub repo, you do have to pay for a GitHub account. <laughs> yeah, Mike, uh, I'm assuming this is about your creating the app for the update thing there. He says, surely it would require an app to read the JSON file and use the REST API to update the database tables. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it wouldn't be fully automated, uh, but y y at least at least if you had a file, and, and not too dissimilar to let's say, uh, Pretty's app on the web app transfer or Scott Reynolds app on the web app transfer and the web form transfer, right? If you can get the overall structure of what is needed, like you can export that, and it's sorted into a JSON file. And then on the new site, you know, if you've uploaded that to the server, you, you know, you would have to go into the back end and the admin and just say like update, right? And then it would read from that JSON file and do all the things in the API to create the things that you're needed. So I think conceptually it, it's a clearer path to it, but you know, obviously there's work involved in, in terms of making sure that happens and you know, it's, it's, it's you know, error proof, right? And things like that, so. <laughs> Uh, it makes me, I'm wondering just off the top of my head, if, if that's something that that Zapier app could help with. No, the Zapier app wouldn't help with that. Um, uh, no, it yeah. wouldn't. No, you'd still have to have the connection. So it, it, it's a connection tool, so. Hmm. There's, uh, Mike wants to take up a, a collection so we can buy BC from Adobe and then fix it. <laughs> um yeah no, probably not the first or the last to suggest that um and i i guess you know we're in i know <laughs> um but you know there's I, I, the, I the, the nice thing is truthfully you know that they're uh really we just need them to continue to open up the platform so that we have more power more control to do the things that we want on, on top of it right so um yeah, a lot of there's a lot that we can do, and there's still a small percentage of the of the uh, system that is is not available via APIs. But if you guys if you guys want these things, or you want 
that the ability for other people, maybe like us or others to be able to create these things, definitely email or, you know, and mention to business catalysts that you're looking for these things. Cause like that does help to, to, you know, get prioritize these things over, over others. I wonder if the uh, lighting changes. Oh, there we go. That's nice. <laughs> I wondered, and I guess I'll wonder out loud. I wonder if that's how Adobe wound up with uh, with Business Catalyst in the first place from from Goodberry. What do you mean by that, Dave? They they said, "Well, let's buy this and fix it." Oh, sure. <laughs> and then uh, and then they opened up the box and said, "Oh." Uh, James asked how to mention that to BC. What what do you think is the best uh, the best way? To, if you want to mention those kinds of things, how do you get that message to BC in the, in the most efficient manner? Yeah. Uh, so the communication channel, I'm not hundred percent sure on. I mean, it could be a support ticket. Well, okay. First of all, the best thing you can do is to show up to Adobe max and tell them in person, there's nothing like telling someone to their face, like what you need to be done. Right. So I'd say that's, that's number one. Um, but short of that, you know, emailing support and, in, and not just being like, hey, why don't we have this, you know, God dang it, like get it done. Uh, but more so, uh, you know, articulating what it is that you are like you need and then what are the use cases. And, and that's the that's the huge part. This is the thing that we need to remind ourselves is that we as web developers, as web agencies, um, we are in this every single day, we understand the, the joys and the pain of creating websites in using content management systems. And the people, whether it's Business Catalyst or others, the engineers who are working on the system themselves, they're concentrated on building the infrastructure, building the backend stuff, building all the things that you know, the CMS does, and they're not talking to the end clients. They're not um, you know, looking at RFPs. Like they're, they, they're not in touch with uh, what people want and what people need as much as, as we are. So the, the better we can articulate what the actual use cases are, um, and the impact that it's having on uh, on your business or you know other bu people's businesses uh, in in a polite, respectful, professional manner, uh, the the more weight those requests are going to carry. I did see another question come in here that does a testing server need to be named testing server? Uh, no, it doesn't. I just, you can set up the name however you like inside of uh, Dreamweaver. So I went here, I just called it testing server, but you, you know, you can call it whatever you'd like. You know, I, you know, one thing that I think goes without saying, but you know, for beginners, it's good to point out is that in order to get this testing server in Business Catalyst, it's super simple. I just go to the partner portal. I find my, my normal server, my normal site. I click replicate. I wait a couple of minutes and now I've got a new URL and I just pop it in Dreamweaver and now I've got the exact same website on a new instance, a new domain, and now I've got my testing in my remote server. So really, really simple. Uh, to set that up. And that's one of the beautiful things about Business Catalyst is the ease of, of deployment um, uh, for that, so. The thing that, uh, that Git adds to that is is the version control, really. Yeah. The version control, and I even say like, yeah, in documentation, maybe that goes hand in hand, but just being able to, um, yeah, I guess I guess that's one of the same <laughs> or version control and documentation. But yeah, <laughs> sometimes yeah. So if there's, if there's no more questions about uh, about GitHub and Dreamweaver, we can certainly open it up and see if anybody has any questions they'd like uh, the the community to try and answer here. There's lots of folks on here, so maybe you can get an answer. Go ahead and type it in the uh, in the question there, or even in the chat. I'm watching them both, so. Yeah, so a, a comment came in said, I'd love to be able to consume all the REST APIs from Liquid and avoid the limitations of using module underscore. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what the module data is 
is meant for, right? That is the liquid way of consuming the REST APIs. Obviously being the one big limitation of that is it doesn't support web apps. And I don't know if it's going to support web apps anytime soon. And if it does support web apps, I wouldn't be surprised if you, it's only available on either the current highest plan or a new higher price plan uh, than, than business catalyst currently is just because the amount of the amount of, the amount of uh, resources uh, from what I understand talking with the BC engineering team that a web apps take up in general is disproportionate to all everything else. And then be able to consume all of the APIs from the, un, uh, from the front end with unlimited uh, is, is also a huge, uh, huge concern as well. So um yeah, so I, I, I definitely would love to see it coming. I think a lot, some of our clients would definitely be willing to pay a higher monthly fee for us to be able to have access to certain um, you know, pieces of functionality. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. Steve uh, Cummings has asked, what is the process of setting up GitHub and Dreamweaver? Oh, okay, so I'll do it uh, with you guys right now. So let's say I wanted to add one to She Did Her Way. This is, boom, 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 boom. okay, cool. So I don't have a Git repo for a She Did It Her Way uh, podcast website. And let's say I wanted to create one. So the first thing you need to do, don't initialize in, well, you could initialize here first, but you really need to create your, your GitHub repo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into um, my Git repo and create a new repo, uh, new repo. And I'm going to call it, uh, she did it her way. And I give a description. She did it, uh, her way website. Okay. And maybe I'll call it dash website. Okay. So I'm going to make it private and I'm not going to initialize a readme or anything. So I'm going to create this repository. So I'm creating a repository in GitHub. It doesn't matter if it's private or public, whatever, uh, you want to do. So then I'm going to come back here. To Dreamweaver, I'm going to click Initialize Git, and okay, now it's going to see oh, there's not a whole lot of files on the server. I probably, uh, if I'm going to do this, let's do it right, right? So I'm probably I'm going to download all my files from the remote server, uh, which uh, this isn't very large, I don't think, so it's not going to take very long. All right, so I can come back and do this while this is working. So I'm I'm going to click Create Remote when I get here. And then what it's going to ask me to do is put in the URL and the name. So I'm just going to grab the name and the URL. And then I'm going to type in my, let me just make sure the password field. Okay, good. Um, I just need to type in my GitHub credentials. And hit OK. So now I'm connected there. I'm going to wait till this whole thing is downloaded. Uh, which maybe I won't wait. Maybe we'll, uh, but anyways. And then we, what you'll do is you'll just, you'll click all of these to then stage them all. You'll click commit and then you will then, um, you know, push it to the, uh, the, the repo. So pretty, pretty simple process to uh, hit, sync this up with a, a new repo. One of the things I will say that I haven't found the best way to approach it yet is, well, what if I already have a GitHub repo and I want to tie it in with an, a new website? Uh, or, you know, maybe I'm, it's my home computer and I've been working on my remote computer. What I recommend doing is hooking up to the, to the site like you normally would, but don't download any of your local files yet from Business Catalyst. Hook it up to the remote and then uh, pu uh, pull everything from your Git repo down to your local so there's no conflicts. And then what I would do is I would do a... Uh, synchronization with uh, dr the Dreamweaver synchronization to check the files for, uh, local and remote and see if there's any differences. I mean, you could probably do it the other way too, actually. So I, I can't say I recommend. Uh, that's just the way that I've been approaching it. But again, I you know we haven't been working on this in a in a team environment. It's really just been myself experimenting with it, and I, I probably don't have all the best practices at the moment. So Steve asked uh, if there is a GitHub extension for Dreamweaver and uh, James Sennett replied that it's built into the newest CC version. That's correct. Yeah. So there's no extension that you need. It's just part of um, Dreamweaver Creative Cloud. 
Hey, Mike is uh, going to have a go at GitHub with Visual Studio and report back uh, on how he makes out. Oh, nice. That'd be great. Yeah. That's a great point too, is that you don't have to use Dreamweaver in order to go through this process, right? I think Sublime Text probably has a way to, with plugins to do maybe something similar. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, I, 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 the Dreamweaver and uh, integration uh, with GitHub, I thought was pretty, pretty enticing to give Dreamweaver a try in this process. Then James adds, you can use the previously mentioned desktop app and just edit the files using any developer tool you want. Correct. Yep. Never tell a developer exactly how to do something, right? Because they'll uh, figure out a different way that they like doing it instead. So that's, that's a great thing is you can, there's a lot of different ways a lot of ways to work it if you want version control and business catalyst for sure. So this is just one of one of the ways to approach it. I use a big stick and just uh, wave it around and say, don't touch my site. <laughs> that used to work, Dave, not anymore. <laughs> uh, Jack actually said he thought he saw a class about this uh, listed in Max, and I think I actually signed up for it. So I think you're right, Jack. Yeah, I'm signed up for it as well, but I doubt, well, I don't want to say they, I doubt. I bet you they didn't go into as, as much detail about the business catalyst side of things as I did, but I'm sure I will learn a ton more from the Dreamweaver or GitHub side for sure, definitely. Uh, James asked if you could just uh, show what it looks like from the GitHub side once you put the files. If you have Okay, so let me go ahead and commit this. So this will I'll say like initial uh initial load and hit okay and then i'm going to go ahead and push this and we'll switch back over to github and okay that was quick nice that's small site and it'll refresh so now you can see this site in github which is nice. So if I want to look at the index pipe, oh, wow, I don't know where I got that accent all of a sudden. Uh, if I want to look at the index page in GitHub, I can, and it's right here. And technically, you can even edit the file right here if you wanted to. Um, I don't know what, why you'd want to do that necessarily, but you, you can. Um, and of course, then you can grab the latest. So Now the challenge, of course, comes in in terms of the execution of the process, right? Like what happens if someone updated the GitHub, but not the remote server, now it's like, all right, now I've got to figure out, I got to merge my conflicts between both the GitHub and the remote server. Like that's a pain in the neck or, you know, if someone just uploaded the remote server, but not the GitHub. Okay. Well maybe that's a little bit better. As long as every, people consistently do that, then I know, okay, I'm always just going to grab from the remote server and then update the GitHub. So yeah, I think there's, if you're working in a team, you, you guys need to follow a process so it doesn't get out of control. Even though you've got version control, uh, you don't want to spend you know, 45 minutes figuring out what the heck is going on and the 15 minutes making the change. Um, you know, so there, there's some of that to this stuff as well. It, it is uh, right about five o'clock here, so that's the time we would normally pack things up. Unless there's any final questions. I think Steve Johnson's looking for the address for where he sends the five dollars to. Five dollars for what? Well, how do we make five dollars, Dave? Oh no, he just sends that to me. I, I'm, oh, <laughs> that, that's that's that big uh, stick waving uh, at its work. Right. That's right. <laughs> and he's far enough away. Like it's it's a seventeen hour flight for him to come and hit me. So I, I figure I can get away with asking it. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing uh, those who are arriving in person at, at uh, Adobe Max and going to the BC pre-conference. Always, always a great time. So thanks again, guys, for, for tuning in. I love and appreciate the participation. And for those who are watching the recording and actually stuck all the way to the end to hear this, you are amazing. Thank you. And we'll see you guys next week. All right.